Honorable Mr. Chairman Brandon Harrigan, Ambassadors, Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is not something unusual for you to have in this hall President of the European Parliament. You could uh, have a former President of Parliament very often in this hall, and I am very, really, very honored to be invited in this place. And it is a um, place in which uh, very deep discussions um, are proposed in crucial moments. Probably, and before I begin, and since Irish is not only your first official language, but also one of the 23 official languages of the European Union, can I just say, sorry, I must uh, uh, read it carefully. To o hes orem velif in you go ref ma eguif. Well, um, it is not, I, I, I hope, only political correct, correctness, but also you could understand what I said. <laughs> well, okay. And I would like to especially thank the Irish Institute of International and European Affairs for inviting me to address you on the topic of the Lisbon Treaty. This has given me an opportunity to also meet representatives of civil society and to engage with NGOs while in Ireland, which is very stimulating and interesting. I had some meetings and I, pre I prepared myself for the next ones. I would like to also personally salute my distinguished predecessor as President of the European Parliament, Pat Cox. I am very glad I can be here. I just repeat it once again. And um, I would like to congratulate you on the job that you are currently doing, namely informing citizens of the merits of the Lisbon Treaty through the island of, for Europe, island for Europe, and uh, people's organization that he's leading, that you are leading, and I think is very, very important um, organization uh, for, for such uh, information. We need information. But let, ladies and gentlemen, let us go to, to the to the merit of the, of the problem. Um, I am not here to represent any political party or any government. I am certainly not here to tell the Irish people how to vote. I have lived too long under a dictatorship which told us not only how to vote and even how to think, to ever, ever presume to do that. I do believe, though, that it is important for the information campaign to be truth, truthful, honest, and fair. And I hope that the vo vote will be on the issues at stake in the Lisbon Treaty and not a vote on the performance of the current government. The Irish referendum on the Lisbon Treaty on 2nd October is too important for the future of Ireland and the future of Europe for it to be used as a means of sending domestic messages to people here in Dublin. The vote of the Irish people on 2nd October is about sending a message about Ireland's place in Europe. I believe that this is too important a referendum for the luxury of low turnout. I urge people to go out and vote to make their opinions heard. This is the sovereign decision of the Irish people, a decision that would be reinforced by high participation, high turnout. While in Dublin today, I was very surprised to see certain posters around the city regarding the Treaty of Lisbon, which have been put up by the No campaign. I have always felt it is important to listen to all points of view, all opinions, including Eurosceptical ones, of course. It is important to listen to all concerns or fears and to seek to address them. Indeed, it seems to me that this is exactly what the Irish government did after the Irish people said no 
to the treaty last year. However, I would like to take this opportunity to challenge some of the, of the assertions being made by the no campaign through the posters and elsewhere. Point number one, taxation. It is simply untrue to claim that the Lisbon Treaty grants taxation powers to the European Union. There is nothing in the new treaty on this. The principle of unanimity in Council remains. There is no change to either union competences or the decision-making method. Point number two, minimum wage. The Irish minimum wage is a matter, of, is a matter which is decided exclusively by the Irish authorities. There is nothing in the Lisbon Treaty to suggest that the rate will be cut back to under two euros, nor that such matters will be decided by Brussels. Next point, very important, is abortion. It's important not only Ireland. May I also state for the record that the issues of abortion, protection of the unborn or of the family and other ethical concerns cannot be legislated by Brussels. In all these cases, it is, it is the Irish government, the Irish parliament, and at the end, the Irish people, which will have the final say. These are all issues which are very important for my own country, Poland, and are important to me as well. Well, as you said, Mr. Chairman, very similarities between our countries. I will say a few words about that later. We had a similar debate, and our citizens expressed similar concerns in my country. Uh, going back to the abortion issue, as a Christian, I too share the concern expressed about many of the ethical issues, not abortion problem only, which are arised in Ireland. But I am reassured that Poland, Ireland, and every member state remain sovereign on these ethical questions. I am also reassured by my firm conviction that the Lisbon Treaty and the Charter of Fundamental Rights enshrine our common European values that owe so much to our Christian heritage. Pope Benedict XVI has referred to the Charter as a sign that Europe is once again consciously seeking its soul. I think for everyone, Christian, the words are very important. As countries, I found that Poland and Ireland have much in common. Uh, we have similar traditions, as you said, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and have a similar history, history of occupation, history of immigration due to poverty, poverty or political oppression. We are both now modern societies with a commitment to free trade, a market economy, export-driven growth, and a belief in the resources of our own dynamic people to bring about prosperity to our nation. In, in Ireland's European partners listened to your concerns very carefully, and Ireland secured a good deal at the June European Council. Most notably, Ireland will continue to have the right to designate a member of the European Commission, the Commissioner. You have also received legally binding guarantees on your traditional policy of neutrality. And neutrality probably is, is as important for you as a problem of abortion. And additionally, I would like to add to all three issues I mentioned be before, the taxation rate, minimum wage, and abortion, uh, will be all three problems will be also decided entirely in your country and it is also legally binding guarantees from the EU level. Ireland is now facing a difficult economic trial. At the same time, 
your euro membership means that when the banking crisis hit, the EU showed solidarity and came to the rescue. The Irish government's NAMA plan has been approved by the European Commission and has the backing of the European Central Bank. I think in these discussions it is important not only to hear to message but also to consider the messenger. Sometimes it is even more important. I note that all the major political parties in Ireland, the main farming organization, the major, major trade unions, the business community, I met some representatives of your business community in Brussels a few days ago, artists, sports persons, journalists and academics have come out in support of the treaty. I couldn't help noticing, by contrast, that the No campaign is made up of marginal groups, some with very extreme views and parties from outside your country. What well, saying about groups from outside your country? So it is reason uh, for which I, I wouldn't like to be involved in campaign, just to answer the questions. Uh, I, I have a great honour in front of uh, Irish people. I would like I would like them to, to decide on their own, because it is their decision, Irish, Irish people. Uh, let me go to the last part of my speech. Well, uh, what I see as the, well, as a being President of the European Parliament, uh, the benefits of the new treaty for the democratic rules in the EU and the impact of citizens on the EU decisions making process should be very important for every one citizen, also in Ireland. First of all, there will be four points. I believe that the Lisbon Treaty will help in rebalancing the problems of the so called democratic deficit in the EU. Under Lisbon, the democratically elected parliament, there's only one such a body in the European Union, democratically elected from every one region, will finally become a true co-legislator with the Council of Ministers. Second, I believe that the strengthened role of national parliaments in the European legislative, well, the whole process, legislative process, will be a long-term benefit since it will help to legitimize, legitimize EU law. It will enable your, your parliament to be involved right from the beginning in helping to shape legislation because you, your two chambers will be able to indicate areas which they feel are sensitive to a particular member state, to your member state, to your, to your, to, to Ireland. And you can do it uh, ex post. Uh, sorry, ex ante, not ex post, it's very important. Ex ante, not ex post. If a majority of parliaments are against a proposed legislation, national parliaments, of course, this legislation will be withdrawn. This is an added guarantee of subsidiarity. And we don't talk about that a lot. It's very important. This is something we in the European Parliament welcome very much. We feel that it is much better that we have a dialogue with national parliaments, all of them, early in the process, so that we adopt laws which are proposed and necessary. Point number three. I believe that the new citizens' initiative, which will enable a legislative proposal to be tabled when one million signatures are collected, gives power back to our constituents. I see this as a check and balance mechanism where ultimately citizens can also demand the certain legislation be withdrawn or amended or that we legislate in certain areas. Legislate in certain areas. Fourth, point number four. I think the institutional dialogue 
with churches and religious is a very important development because it underlines that faith groups play an important role in our societies. Institutional dialogue. I'm saying about new idea. The European Union is not just about economics. And I believe that these consultations will all parts of civil society make for better policy making. The European Parliament is adapting to the changes that the new treaty will bring. One of my priorities as newly elected president is to make the work of the Parliament as transparent and as open to the public as possible. For instance, I recently agreed with the current president of the Commission, José Manuel Barroso, that he will attend Parliament's plenary sittings for an hour's question and answer session. Quite new idea. So that our members can raise issues or concerns they have over particular areas of the work of the Commission whatever they want. I am personally a strong supporter of the Lisbon Treaty. Well, I must tell it. I voted for it in the European Parliament and have campaigned for it in Poland. I believe that treaty strikes the right balance in strengthening the institutions and allowing them to function in a Europe of 27 member states but at the same time guarantees the rights of each of our countries. I think we can never forget that the motto of the European Union is united in diversity. Whatever some people may claim, we have never tried to create a European supper state. Nor are we building one today in Brussels. We have to protect our diversity because this is what makes Europe strong. It is this blend of ideas, cultures, regional traditions, national identities, which makes our unity more powerful. I hope that when the people of Ireland make up their own minds about the Lisbon Treaty, they will also reflect upon the broader context of what the European Union has brought. I'm convinced that when the Irish people examine closely what is at stake, they will find it in their hearts and minds to support the Lisbon Treaty, a treaty which is essential for the continued realization of our shared European dream of peace and prosperity in our continent. In conclusion, I would like to thank the Irish Institute for International European Affairs once again for hosting me today. I am very happy to take questions, but before I do that, because question answers minutes, hmm, since I am so strong believer in defending um, national identities with the European Union, uh, may I just say will be another very difficult try for me. Go ref mile mai eguif go nein lif. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say it is great time for me. I'm second time in my life in Ireland, and I visited your country 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, and I remember till now this visit. It was also a great visit and great contacts with government, with, with representative of, uh, of civil society, universities, and you still keep very strong influence on everything what is happening in the European Union. So congratulations to you. Thank you very much.